Woman. I change your bum life. You fight me, it's a celebration. You can, beat you when you sign to fight me, it's a celebration. You ring back home, you ring your wife. Baby, we done it. We're rich, baby. Conor McGregor made us rich. Break out the red panties. We're rich, baby. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the fifth round. As always, your boy, Steven Musterius and me. Um, I just kind of broke down UFC 275 over the weekend. and Just some phenomenal shit all around. Um... Jake Matthews' performance was fucking nuts. Uh, clearly, the knockout Zhang Weili did on Joanna, classic. That's going to go down for, always as one of the greatest knockouts ever. Um, you know, the, the close, close fight between Valentina Shevchenko and Taylor Santos. Like, did Santos get, you know, robbed? And then clearly the fucking light heavyweight classic between Yuri Prohoshka as he took out uh, Glover Tashir with like 20 seconds left in the fifth round. Phenomenal shit. But with all this being said, um, you know, all eyes kind of shift forward to this fight night this weekend. And I, I know the main event's pretty stacked. We got, you know, Calvin Cater as he takes on Josh Emmett um, and at 145. And then clearly, you know, the, the Donald Cerrone, Joe Lozon fight finally happens after he, uh, I think Donald Cerrone got food poisoning at UFC 274. And it's what kind of took the fight off the plate. But um, I'm sitting here. I kind of already broke down the Cerrone Lozon fight. Kind of still think it's going to go down the same way. I think I think Cerrone. I, clearly, I think winner stays in town. Loser leaves town. I think clearly, I think Cerrone's probably going to pull this one out. I think he's been a little more active. I think his stand up's better. Um, I don't see Lozon getting him down frequently enough to maybe finish him. I don't know. I just I just think both guys. If this fight was back in 2010, 2011, 2012, even 2013 something like that could have been a really really good fight but you know both of them kind of old horses you know just getting back on the saddle type shit i just i still think Cerrone's probably gonna pull it out but um leads me to the main event and before i guess i talk about the main event um these fight nights i know they're not usually as stacked anymore is what we've kind of grown accustomed to especially after last weekend these pay-per-views are getting so stacked that we might feel a little underwhelmed as just a fan for these fight nights but Man, these fight nights are where we get a lot of our next, you know, prospects and shit at. So I'm always a big fan. I love watching every fight. You know, you get to find out a new name every single time. And these guys have to go out there and make a name for themselves. So it's not like, you know, kind of like the Rose Nami Yunus Carlos Sparza fight. Where it's like both ladies. It's such a big moment. They don't want to take steps back and everything. So it's like you get that boring fight. So this is one of those ones. You don't get a boring fight usually on these fight nights because... This is their chance to make a name and get a crazy knockout or crazy sub or whatever it is. So um, I'm very excited for it. I know a lot of people aren't usually, but, you know, I'm, I'm really excited for this Calvin Cater and uh, Josh Emmett fight. I've been such a huge fan of both of them, especially the way Calvin Cater came back against Giga Shikaze after his after just getting absolutely dismantled by Max Holloway. You know, it's I feel like even though that loss he took against Max Holloway was one of the worst losses in uh, MMA career or in MMA history, just how dominant it was, it still, I think, was what he needed, and we've seen it against Giga Chikadze. I think everybody in the world was scared to fight Giga, and then Calvin Cater says, hold my beer, here I am, and puts on, pretty much turns into Max Holloway and makes Giga turn into fucking Calvin Cater, so I thought that was really cool. And then Josh Emmett, Josh Emmett's got one of the Man, that man got some of the biggest power ever at 145, and I know, I know, uh, I know we've seen him lose a little bit and whatnot. Um, but he also just came back after I think blowing out his ACL and just had a really nice win. So, you know, I'm really excited, um, especially now. I feel like between Max Holloway and uh, Alexander Volkanovsky, I feel like these guys are just taking out everybody that's ever been there. Korean Zombie's gone. Brian Ortega's gone. You know, you can go on, you can go on the list forever. Um, I guess the only people left are these two, Yair Rodriguez. I mean, clearly Max and Volkanovsky got to finish their beef, but, you know, Yair Rodriguez is right there. Um, Arnold Allen, and then what's, I guess, uh, Bryce Mitchell. I guess it was like, it's, it's coming down to the nitty gritty now where it's not too many guys anymore. I, even though 145 is still stacked and the top 15 is so crazy, even the top 20 is so nuts. But it's really cool because for these guys, at least for Calvin Cater and Josh Emmett, it's like, you know, one big performance here, you could easily next in line. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I am really excited to see how this turns out. 
I don't. I, I think if Calvin Cater can, I know this sounds really cliche and really cheesy, but if Calvin Cater can just avoid that first two rounds of the power of Josh Emmett, I think he should run away with this one pretty easily. I, I love Josh Emmett and everything, but the dude is kind of dependent on his big punch. And I know he's got great wrestling and everything too, so I'm not sitting here thinking he get dominated on the ground, but I just think I think Calvin Cater is so good and puts things together so well, combos and everything, that it's going to be a tough fight for anybody if they don't get him out of there. So I think it's a lot like the uh, Giga Chikaze fight. Um, and I don't know what it is for Calvin. I think at this rate, after that loss against Max, I feel like he feels like the chains are off, I guess, a little bit, where he feels free as fuck, where he can do anything he wants now. And I have to worry necessarily so much about, you know, winning all the time, which is still the key. But I think he's going in there a little more free now. Like, hey, Max Holloway did shit to me that nobody, I never thought could be imaginable. So now it's like it's never going to happen again, almost in his mind. So I think he's got a little less to uh, to focus on, I guess, outside of the fight. Um, Josh Emmett's looking to get back. I know he's trying to make his name for himself, which he's always been just right there. And then, bang, you know. Jeremy Stevens knockout or you know anything so I'm really excited to see this fight like I said I'm leaning towards Calvin right now um if it is a finish I'm saying I'm thinking like a late TKO for Calvin Cater but clearly if Josh Emmett wins I think it's one or one or first one first or second round I think would be a knockout but it's so tough to see Calvin Cater even get finished because what he the damage he's willing to be take so very excited for this fight. Um, huge, huge fight for the the 145 division right now. I, I can't wait for it. I'm really excited. Um, clearly, all eyes for me are still on Max Holloway versus Volkanovski, which we're literally about to see here in a couple weeks. So, just fucking geeked. Couldn't couldn't be any more excited. So, um, yeah. And then I guess my heart. If if these guys, if one of them wins super impressively, and they get that jump over Yair Rodriguez, I'd be a little upset for Yair. But at the same time, like. You can't. It's tough to get a title fight off of a loss unless you're Jose Aldo or something. So, but uh, this has been the fifth round. Is always your boy Stephen Mustaris, and I'm really excited for this fight night. So let's go, baby.